Well, welcome back. This is the warm up here on TV3. Uh, if you're listening to us on radio, we're live on 3FM 92.7. Now, he says it is a dream that began when he was 17, a 17 year old at a time who handled a Colts football team all by himself. The man has risen through the ranks to become one of the biggest football personalities in the country. His club, Dreams FC, have become a model club in the country. Branding, aesthetic content, sponsorships, stadium ambience and the general club structure have been incredibly exciting to follow. He served on the previous badly maligned administration, handled the FA Cup and made it an attractive product again. His accolades are many and rightfully so for the work he has done to improve the game in this land. Now he wants the highest office in the football administration of Ghana. Viewers, my guest today is GFA presidential aspirant, Ketu Kreku. Ketu, you're welcome. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Uh, well, not too bad. Um, a bit tired, but uh, we are coping. Well, now, yesterday uh, on your Twitter feed at around 8.45 p.m., I saw that um, you had put on there that the vetting was done and you're looking forward to what's ahead. How was the vetting process for you? Well, I think that it's been uh, strenuous. It's been uh, also a, a good learning curve for all of us, me inclusive. Um, I've never been through this uh, process before, but I think it's good for the game. Um, there was a good opportunity to exchange ideas and opinions on policies, etc., uh, etc. Et so it's been good. Now let's let, let's just take a look at I mean how you you went through that whole process was it uh, was it was it something that um, you I think didn't meet your expectations or did it exceed it? First of all, I I did say prior to my appearance that um, the president of the land uh, Nanako Fado is interested in quality, right. uh, and you could see clearly that uh, that has reflected in what the Minister of Youth and Sports have been doing and what the NC. Uh, had done, i.e., in the compos composition of the of the vetting committee, right. and I had always believed that th the committee was made up of people of the highest quality, yeah. people who fully understand what it means to go through this process. So, I was quite expectant. I was expecting a high level of uh, intellectual exchange, and I was not disappointed at yeah. the end of the day. Now, let's just uh, uh, go back now to your campaign. How's it going from, from the time you declared that you wanted to, well, uh, you wanted a position I, up I until think, now? I think that the campaign started not at the time that I declared, yeah. okay? Um, months ago, we were very clear in our mind what we wanted to do. We went on the road, visited clubs, club owners, uh, talking to them to know what their needs, what their challenges has been in the industry over the last few years, okay? so. We used a greater part of our time, so to say, researching. Right. And this is what most of my colleagues, aspirants, have not done. Right. We all presume and assume that, oh, we know the problems facing our industry. We don't know. You can only know when you conduct a scientific work. You, you do a scientific research, and right. that is exactly what we did. Yeah. So you can see clearly that the content of our manifesto is directly owned by the clubs. The content is coming from the clubs, right. the club owners, the stakeholders, right. okay, the RFAs. So you could see clearly that we've covered almost every department, every facet of, of the football uh, industry, so to say, in, in the manifesto. That's why perhaps it is the game changer. Right. It is the document that will bring life, passion, ignite passion, and create work for all of us. Right. It is a document that that we all have to embrace. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that um, my other aspirants, colleagues, do not have uh, a document, but I'm saying that this is the Game Changer. Now, the Game Changer launch was incredibly organized. It was, it was something nice for, for many people to look at. In many ways, you set the bar really high. I wish I could say it again on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in many ways, you set the bar really high for the other uh, candidates to follow. Now. What went into the general organization of it? And also, I mean, standing there, laying out your, your vision and, and, and mission for Ghana football, do you think it, 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 it fell on good ears to the delegates? Well, I think that if you have followed my good self, I've always been prepared. I've always believed in preparation. And I said it at the, at the launch of the manifesto. Exactly. Um, I didn't arrive at this stage from, from nothing, OK? Um, I have gone through a very good period of preparation yeah. and I, I made sure that 
I was solid. Yeah. Um, if you go back to the event that we, we, we hosted, um, a lot of preparations uh, uh, went through, a lot of thinking processes. Um, I put together a very, very quality uh, team yeah. um, to ensure that we delivered quality to the Ghanaian football industry. Yeah. Anybody who's been associated with Kate knows that when it comes to planning or delivery, I always go for quality. Right. And on the D-Day, we did not only show the future of Ghana football, where we want to take the game. Yeah. We, we showed that um, given any good platform, we would show quality. Yeah. We delivered a quality event and quality content, so to say, in general, including the, man the manifesto. Well, you've, you've hammered also a lot on gender and, and the fact that we need to include more women in the football at, uh, association. I mean, I've heard people say that it's your strategy to try to get some votes from, from the women as well and also make you look inclusive and all of that. What do you have to say to that? I will not fault them if they say so, um, because uh, it's a statement of fact that um, we need to encourage women. The, the biggest body controlling football, FIFA, have, have said in no uncertain terms that we need to increase the number of professional footballers, women, female footballers in our industry. Right. Ghana is not different. Yeah. Um, our female national team, the Black Queens, were the first to go to the Mundial yeah. and not the Black Stars of Ghana. Right. Okay. It tells you clearly that if we give them attention, if we improve on, the, on their capacity across board, human resource, logistical support, infrastructure support, the women's game can be very, very competitive and can be very, very interesting. Look, we have a population that is perhaps dominated by women in yeah. this country. Yeah. Clearly, we need to give them some form of entertainment, including footy. Right. And uh, I think that if we get the basics right, a lot more women will not only find themselves into good positions, i.e. refereeing, medics, um, on subcommittees, coaching, etc., etc., in the football industry. And we need it. And there's massive possible uh, financial rewards yeah. for, for encouraging the, the ladies' sport. Right, if you just join us, uh, this is warm up here on TV3. If you're listening to us on radio, you're live on 3FM 92.7. In the studio with me is GFA's presidential aspirant, Ketu Kriku. Now, this is a, a copy of Ketu's manifesto that's the game changer, uh, as, it, as it chooses to call it. So just send us uh, your tweets. Uh, my handle is at the Yao Ofusu on Twitter, at the Yao Ofusu. That's T H E Y A W O F O S U and sending your comments, your thoughts, and also your questions. And I'll be pleased to um, ask Kurt. I'll be pleased to read them out also to the world for, uh, for you as well. So uh, Kurt is still in the studio. Now, Kurt, your strategic intent, vision, uh, it's on page 7 of the Game Changer Manifesto. It says transparency, accountability, and annual audits, gender and equity, and also good corporate governance, and then professionalism, innovation, and investments. The first question is, when you talk about transparency, accountability, and annual audits, how should we take it as a football fraternity? I think that um, there are very good reasons why we've all arrived at this stage. Right. Okay. Um, the, the image of our federation, our cherished federation, is tainted. Yeah. Um, this is a statement of fact. Uh, we must uh, accept this. Right. Okay. So clearly, um, if we want to be back in business, mm -hmm. if we want to be accepted by not only our direct publics, right. but also the general public at large and corporate Ghana most importantly, yeah. there's a need for a clear repositioning strategy. Uh, okay, and you need to have the quality. You need to have the ability to put a good team together to roll out a good repositioning strategy for the Football Association. Right. And that includes the new status that we have adopted at, at Congress right. because Clearly, there's a clear separation of powers, which is very good for, for governance. It's also important that we institute, institute internal strict compliance uh, I mean, uh, I mean systems, yeah. uh, internal audit systems, um, to ensure that everybody uh, works up to the, the total goal of repositioning the, the product. And this is key, yeah. because if we don't get it right, Corporate Ghana will not be interested. Right. And once Corporate Ghana is not interested, um, we'll not make the money that we all yearn. Um, but it's most important for us to start from the beginning. Yeah. Make sure that we have a good secretariat, 
not only a good secretariat, but an efficient secretariat, okay? Um, the new status will, will help us with the clear separation of powers. Uh, and once the secretariat is working very well, the general secretary is in control of, of, of the affairs of the FA. Clearly, um, good corporate governance for, uh, policies of transparency, accountability will be at its apex. Now, you, you've, also, you've also spoken about professionalism. What, what areas of the football administration and its dealings do you think should be a bit more professional than it is at the moment? Everything. Everything? Everything. Amazing. I.e. Um, the Secretariat. When I speak about, about Secretariat, I'm not talking about only the, the headquarters in Accra. Right. We are talking about uh, across the various regions of Ghana, the RFAs, mm -hmm. okay? Um, clearly, they need a lot more attention. Right. The RFAs are the bedrock of, of the game, especially right. amateur football. Right. And if it is that they don't have the resources, right. uh, they have uh, lack of uh, quality staff. Mm -hmm. um, when I speak about resources, I'm not only talking about money, I'm talking about uh, computers, I'm yeah. talking about stationery, right. uh, for example. Okay, uh, There's a need for new products to be developed. Right. They need sponsorship. Again, there's a need for an effective repositioning strategy right. also at that level. Uh, I want us to pay more attention to grassroots football, the coast right. leagues, the coast football, uh, juvenile football, the women's game, Division 2, Division 3. They produce the super talents that we, we use at the, at the higher level. And, right. and if we don't get it right at the, at, at the beginning yeah. or in the beginning at, or at the basics, we, we, would, we would not have laid down a solid foundation for the, for the big takeoff. Um, once we get it right from, from the grassroots level, it will feed up. Um, we are talking about developing an industry, uh, not uh, a fraternity that will wholly rely on the patents from, from gate proceeds or gate, proceed, um, gate receipts mm -hmm. or player trading, but we need to develop media rights, right. we need to develop merchandising. Um, I mean, there must be a lot of uh, openings for commerce across board, and it starts from the beginning. Well, now, let's, let's go now to the RFAs. You, you spoke in that um, you, you want to concentrate mainly on uh, a lot on grassroots football and, and coach football. Now, I've visited many coach pitches. The recent one I visited was the ones in Manprobi, where they've all been abandoned. Some of them have actually sold the lands out for churches and schools and that sort of thing. In your administration, if you're elected to become uh, a president of the FA, how are you looking to improve the, the grassroots football? Because many of them who have clubs that have fed Premier League clubs are saying that it's not, it's not working anymore. Well, first of all, be first of all um, you need a leader who believes that there's a need for greater attention for grassroots football. Right. Fortunately, I'm a direct product of grassroots football. I played Colts. Yeah. I was not a super talent, so I didn't come out to be a big player. Right. I own a Colts club uh, in God We Trust FC. Yeah. And I recruit mainly from the amateur leagues, be it third division, second division. Right. So I, need, I know there are, there are challenges. Mm -hmm. okay? One of the policies uh, amongst many that we tend to roll out will be the uh, will be in what we call the uh, game centers. Yeah. In the time past, uh, I used to travel to Manchagbona. You just mentioned one venue, yeah. okay, where coast games are played solely. Um, it's so important that we go back to that policy. In Accra, we have plus minus two hundred and twenty-seven coast clubs. Wow. That tells you that we can't develop a product from such numbers if every coast club is to play at their natural or home venues, right. okay? We need to have a policy that will be tilted towards developing product out of the coast system. And from this product, we can sell, we can market. Okay. So we would want to introduce game centers where the, the playing surfaces will be improved mm -hmm. and where per each center, they will have 50 balls, okay, okay. For, the, for the games. Okay. Now we're looking at also making it a lot easier for the coast club owners to manage their clubs. Yeah. What do I mean by this? Registration of players will be free. Yeah. They will not pay referee fees. Okay. okay. Because you want to ask yourself, who are the owners of coast clubs? You and I know. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to go into that exactly. tangent, but yeah. we want to help them. 
um, referee fees must be a thing of the past because what we want to do is to introduce what we call the cut them young refereeing policy where we're going to encourage um, kids uh, in SHS, DHS, depending on your quality and your stature, to be interested in officiating. We want to preach that gospel and they're going to do that free of charge. Yeah. Okay, we're going to encourage the kids, we'll provide them with the necessary incentive to, to be able to, to be interested. Yeah. Okay, so over time we'll have only juveniles officiating juvenile games. Right. It's amazing. Okay. Okay. And 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 would have succeeded in nurturing talents, yeah. i.e. refereeing referees. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the strategies we, we want to roll out, the Cadem Young refereeing policy. Yeah. We want to give to each RFA or RFAs thirty two thousand balls annually. Thirty two thousand balls annually. Um this they will use or they'll give to their clubs. Yeah. Okay. And and these are just few of the many uh, policies we want to roll out. So clearly it depends on who the leader is. If the leader believes that there's a lot more attention that has to go to juvenile football, it will go to juvenile football. If the leader believes that women's football needs attention, women's football would get attention. Right. And then go back into the manifesto. Mm -hmm. And we have clearly stated where we're going to find the money. Exactly. We created what we call the central fund. Yeah, that's, that's right behind And the central the fund yeah. will not only support women's football and coast football, but will also support RFA-related activities. Right. Okay. And we've also stated the, f the sources of funding, mm -hmm. the sources where we're going to take the money and yeah. put into that central fund. Yeah. One of such is 10% of all statutory payments to the FA. Right. Okay. Another source of funding is 10% of all payments via national team engagements. Right. The third one, per what we have here mm -hmm. for, the, for the central fund, is 2% yeah. of all, 2% of the FA share mm -hmm. on international transfers. Right. We're saying that such monies will go into this central fund and it will be assessed for coast football, women's football, and RFA related activities. The money is in the system. Right. Kurt, would there be a, a regulatory body? Now, we know the issues about coach owners and how they manipulate these players, get them some very bad contracts. They go out there, they are living in very dire conditions. You mean coach? I mean coach. No, I mean, I mean the, the, the coach owners okay. sort of gets into uh, some of these uh, transfer issues and, and it becomes a problem for the players later on in their lives. And also um, about the issue of sending balls to the RFAs. Are you going to have a regulatory body that would check that the balls are here, the balls are being delivered in the right way. I think, I think that uh, what, is, what gladdens my heart is the new status that we have. I'm not saying that it's, it's excellent, but it provides us with a, a, a big opportunity to improve on, on what we've been doing. Right. Um, we're going to have an internal compliance unit. Yeah. This compliance unit would supervise some of these activities. But I think that generally there's uh, an awareness across board that we need to behave well, which is good. And we'll yeah. continue to educate people to behave well. Exactly. Um, the cold system has lots of challenges. Yeah. It will take a leader who believes in engaging the key stakeholders to be able to find solutions. Yeah. If you see that we've been able to roll out interesting policies for the cold system, it's because we have engaged club owners, okay, people who are directly involved, people who are directly affected by, by the happenings of, of the years gone by, okay. So, so, so we'll continue to engage the, the people who are directly involved and that will help us in finding the right solutions. Let's come now to the local league, the Ghana Premier League. Many people have said that the interest is gone. What are you looking to do to bring the interest back? First of all, I'll be the first to admit that it is possible to bring the interest back. And this is a gospel I'll preach to everybody, that it is possible. Yeah. I believe that whatever we see on our screens, uh, from whether the Bundesliga or, or, or the La Liga, is, is created by a group of people, yeah. okay? And, and we have people in this country who have the same level of intellect to be able to create same. Yeah. Um, for the Premier League, first, I would push and I'll push that it should be autonomous. Right. It is key. I would want to see a dedicated body thinking about the Ghana Premier League and how to develop the Ghana Premier League. Clearly, if you offer 50% service to a product, yeah. you cannot compare to you offering 100% service to, to the same product. So the independence of, 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 the, of the league is paramount. 
beyond that, we have said that we want to help, given what had happened in the last 12 months, we want to help our clubs to stand on their feet again by the provision of basic, and I'm saying basic, infrastructural and logistical support. We are saying that if you want to produce quality players who will play quality football, that will attract people, fans, to the stadium, then you need to give them good training pitches. These training pitches can remain healthy if there's constant and regular flow of water. Yeah. So we want to fix that problem. Beyond that, we want to give them footballs. You visit training grounds of clubs, they don't have footballs. A coach will tell you that director or chairman, I need one, one football per each player, right. per player. You go to the training grounds of a Premier League team, they have 10 balls, they have 15 balls. It's woefully not enough. Right. It isn't the case that club owners don't know what is good for, for their clubs, but it is the case that the football economy is so tight, so small, liquidity is always a problem. So, yes, they know what is good, but they cannot provide what is good. So we want to help yeah. the clubs. Another need of clubs, football boots. Players need boots. Because of the bad nature of the training pitches, boots don't last long. So you need to provide more. We also want to ensure that Club owners, club executives don't waste their time to travel all the way from where they are, they are to come to Accra only to get hold of their registration cards. We are saying that we want to decentralize, decentralize the registration system. Yeah. Okay? The registration will go through the same system, but when it comes to the printing of the cards, we will equip the various RFAs to ensure that cards are printed at the regional level. They will save money, and it's better for, for club owners and administrators. Same will be applicable for registration or no player status committee i mean it's a, it's a legal committee of the fa right. that takes care of uh, complaints from players etc etc we are saying that why must everybody travel to accra we all go to school our colleagues in the other regions go to school they study yeah. we have learned people across the regions yeah. let's find the right people put them on subcommittees let them educate on player issues yeah. okay if somebody is not happy by way of the verdict, and you want to go on appeal, you can come to the national level. Then it, it, it's okay. You would have saved money, saved time. It's an efficient way of administering the, 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 the business of football. Okay, so um, clearly, we want to ensure that the Premier League really becomes the elite league, the elite competition, the, the, because naturally, it should have the biggest pool effect. All right across board. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's not. Yeah. Somebody will even say that the MT and FA Cup has a bigger pool effect. Yeah, that someone is me. Right. <laughs> so it tells you clearly yeah. that when you put quality people together, mm -hmm. when they believe in the, in the leadership of right. the group, yeah. they'll, they'll fight among themselves, mm -hmm. but they'll end up producing quality. Yeah. And this we have shown throughout the lifespan of the MT and FA Cup since we, we brought it back in 2010, 2011. Right. Now, Kurt, one major problem for the Ghana Premier League is hooliganism. Many people want to be safe when they go to the stadium. No one deserves to be hurt when they go to the stadium and then they leave. What are your plans to stop these things? It's, it's becoming very bad across game centers in the country. I think that um, when you go to a league venue, I've had bad experiences before, and the atmosphere is not football friendly. You will not be happy. You will, you will not want to risk fellow members of your family. Exactly. You don't want to bring your kids to the venue to yes. enjoy, yes. even though it's an entertainment. Yes. And the players cannot perform to their best because of the, the nature of the, of, of the, of the stadium. Okay. Now, once we agree to this, and once we all agree that we need to live long in, in life, yes. the Almighty God has given us 70. If you want to get to that level, then we have to do things right. And we are saying that we would ensure that there's a full application or implementation of the club licensing system. Right. We've been speaking about this for long, mm -hmm. but it is time yeah. that we, we, we all go through that system. Beyond that, we have also said that we want to engage the police service, mm -hmm. hopefully to set up a proper sports policing unit. This is key. Policing football or policing sports is distinct from normal policing. And we want to engage the leadership of the police service and hopefully to preach this gospel mm -hmm. and hopefully they will, they will buy into yeah. this. 
We've also said that there's a need for us to introduce the steward system. Uh, here in Ghana? Uh, here in Ghana. Right. Um, um, when we speak about the steward system, people think that, oh, it's not possible. It's possible. Um, it is possible. Will they be paid? Uh, um, it, they will be paid, okay? But these are issues that we'll have to further discuss. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's a general awareness of everybody in the game, in quotes, behaving well. Yes. And, and I think that is good for the sport. Well, certainly. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's also come now to uh, the uh, uh, national division, um, the Division One League. I mean, um, one of the statues that uh, says will change is that after two years, it's going to be trimmed down from 48 all the way down to 18, uh, which if you, if you have voted, it, it could be in your administration where Well, I, 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 if you go through my document, yeah. I never said that, right. okay? I have never said that. I have my own opinion. I, I believe that uh, I would want to see a Division One league that would be progressively independent mm -hmm. in terms of management. Yeah just like the Premier League. Yeah. I want dedicated services towards the development of the product called the Division One League. Right. Um, I don't know why everybody or people are so much interested in a, a, what they call a truly national Division One League. I mean, we have to, somebody will say monkeys play by sizes. We have to be realistic, we have to be real. I would want to stick with, 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 with the way it is. With and the main number. Yes, with, okay. the, with, the, with the way it is and improve on it, right. okay. Um, there are there are a lot of examples of, of such structures uh, in, in 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 place in in various countries and uh, we really have to be careful not to not to do things that will eventually haunt us yeah. people have invested in this game and somebody doesn't want to wake up one morning and then he will lose his investment because of um, a policy that could ultimately lead to trouble right now, Kurt, let's come to the, one of the main products of the Ghana Football Association, the Black Stars. You know, every time the Black Stars play, you know, it's, it's go, it goes all the way back to the FA and many people try to blame the FA for this or that when the Black Stars do not play well. Now, in your, in your, in your opinion, what has the Black Stars become? And how are you looking to restore that image amongst people in the country? I, let me be very honest with you. Um, Ghana Football has a bad public image. Yeah. That but, it, but it looks like the Black Stars That includes yeah. the Black Stars. Yeah. That includes the Black Stars. And I think that we have taken a lot of small details for granted. Yeah. I would want to start the rebuilding of our various products from the beginning, from the grassroots, mm -hmm. okay? And again, it fits into what we have said. We have spoken about igniting passion yeah. and creating wealth. When yeah. we speak about wealth, we are not talking about only money. We are talking about improving on capacity, capacity building, uh, be it coaches, referees, whatever, medics across board. Okay. Now, if we lay the solid foundation mm -hmm. by the provision of the strategic infrastructural and logical support, yeah. we expect that over time, more talents will come through from the grassroots to second division, first division, Premier League. And of course, with the establishment of the fully functional Tenka Directorate, scouting will be key in that department. Okay, so the department will ensure that as many talented players get the opportunity of showing their, their, their quality. Over a period of time, the quality of our national teams, be it U17, U20, U23, the Chan, the women's teams, would improve. And that will ultimately feed into the senior or the A teams of, of Ghana. Now, we want to put together a national team that is truly Ghanaian. A national team that, look, that will always look back and say that we are who we are today because of Ghana. Right. Okay? We want to put together players who truly represent the colors of Ghana and look at uh, the badge, the crest and say that I am a Ghanaian. Yeah. Okay, um, not players who come, unfortunately, to fight over bonuses. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we shouldn't reward players when they perform well. Are they rewarded astronomically? It, it, is, it is important that we, we take one step back right. and clearly look at our reward system when it comes to the national teams. I don't think that we commercializing the national teams is the way forward. Right. I think that 
players, officers who represent our country should feel, first of all, proud yeah. of representing our dear nation. Yeah. And of course, if there is anything you, they must get it. Right. Okay, and, and this is an issue that we have to discuss it clearly and without passion. There's always a big fight between passion and reasoning, I know, but we have to be very clear. Yeah. We want to turn out players who come out and say, I am a Ghanaian, I represent our national team, I play for Ghana because I love my country. Because without our league, regardless of how bad or good it is, I wouldn't be here today. Okay, so I want to play for the shirt. This is what I want to build. What are your thoughts on the on the reward system? I mean, it's it's one of the things that I've the always I've already talk said about. I've already said that they, they always that say they, they take too the, much money. The the reward system doesn't start with our national teams. Okay, it starts from our leagues. First of all, the reward system for our leagues is not good enough. Right. Okay, I would want to introduce what we call the the merit award system. Not only at the Premier League level, but also Division One. Right. Not only at Division One, even at the coast level, there must be a merit award system right. where clubs will yearn to compete and be competitive because of a good reward system. Right. Okay. Now, that will feed up to the Black Stars, yeah. where it's also important that we put an, an award or reward system that is truly Ghanaian. Okay. That is because. I do not believe that our players are working for Ghana. No. Okay. We have invested in them. Yeah. They've had an amazing opportunity to go to Europe. Exactly. And they come to say thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, they have to say thank you, but we need to find a way also to keep them alive. Right, you're still watching us here on Warm Up on TV3. My name is Yao Fosula Beketo Kriku is my guest in the studio this morning. We're taking a break. When we come back, Ketu is still here to answer more questions and also talk about a, a bit about his lighter side. He really loves Shatawale and we'll ask him about it. <laughs> right, so uh, we're back. This is the warm-up here on TV3 and uh, Ket is still in the studio uh, with me this morning. But let me just uh, go uh, to our Twitter page. Uh, my name, Deya Ofusu on Twitter. And uh, Halal Monk says, kindly ask Ket what his vision towards our codes football. Uh, I mean, Ket has already answered uh, the, the topic about codes football. And all the way down to... Okay, so another question for you, Ket. says, my question is, how do we trust that you are not going to walk the same steps as former president, Kwesi Nyanteji, since you worked with him in your administration. This is from Sheila uh, from Kabinya, Ket. Well, first of all, we are two distinctively distinct personalities. Um, fortunately for us, we have new status that, that clearly uh, gives us um, a good in indication of how governance would be. Yeah. There's clear separation of powers. Um, in my manifesto, I've always also said that we intend to set up a compliance unit and strict internal audit systems right. um, and an efficient secretariat across not only at the regional level yeah. but also at the, at the headquarters. Yeah. So it will clearly improve governance yeah. in, 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 in football. And um, if you have known me, I'm the kind of person who would want to achieve a lot, right. who strive for excellence. Yeah. And um, if I do not have the appetite for excellence. Believe me, I will not put myself forward for this contest. Right, Kurt, let's just touch a bit on the Special World Cup Fund and also the Medical Fund, and then we'll come back to well, these the are two, side of you. two very innovative yeah. uh, ideas that we have put together um, to help, again, boost the, the industry. Yeah. Uh, we call one the Special World Cup Fund. Yeah. We are saying that if we get the basics right, mm -hmm. if, if we are if we provide the basic infrastructure and logical support, we expect that performances will go up right. okay, across board. Now, naturally, we expect our national teams to start playing good again and to win in big tournaments exactly. uh, or competitions. Hopefully, we should be at the Mundial again. Right. Now, when we get to the Mundial, whatever inflow we finally get out of our participation in the Mundial, right. we want to ensure that it touches or impacts on some key industry players. Right. And here we are talking about the PFAG, all the welfare bodies, the right. GACA, that's the League Clubs Association, right. the Referees Association, mm -hmm. um, um, 
women's, women's football, football, juvenile football, and even swag, uh, and, and swag, right. because we we see the media as a key partner. Okay, right. we want to ensure that we invest in training mm -hmm. and seminars so that media persons can report much better uh, football-related activities in this country. Kurt, um, a very lighter side of you. I mean, when I was while I was sitting at the at your manifesto launch, I was happy because I'm a I'm a music lover. I heard you play something from Kanye West. I heard you play something from Shatawale. And then several other, you know, musicians that I would... but a, a business entity, okay? Um, we provide livelihood for a lot of people right. in the country. Um, and it's one of the key engagements that we want to embark upon to engage the Na National Youth Employment uh, Agency right. to dialogue, to talk, right. because we, 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 are, we should be a, a big partner, right. okay? We provide a lot of employment, be it even from the coast level, right. okay? So I, I think that... Um, I'm too deep with football. Right. Um, <laughs> if you see the kind of educational line that I, exactly. I undertook, yeah. clearly I was solely looking at the.